Next guest was there, Georgia Republican Congressman Doug Collins, ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee. Uh, good morning to you, sir, and thank you for being here. You were there. What happened? Well, good morning. Uh, what we had was we went into the meeting. We saw a president who was resolute. We saw a president who is willing to sit and, and discuss details. He's willing to bring Democrats in. He's willing to have these conversations. He's made it very clear. We need border security. He's made his number very clear. And he said, let's come to the table and then discuss other things that we might could get us there. It's amazing to me right now that Democrats say they want border security. Even some Democrats are saying that they, would, they understand that a wall is needed. But yet they're allowing their leadership to hold the American government hostage, a partial government shutdown is laying at the feet of Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer because they will not even offer to negotiate. Here is one Democrat, Katie Hill, who says she is in favor of at least some sort of barrier. Watch. I think there's this fixation on the word wall, and I just think that's the wrong conversation to be having because there's so much that we really are as a country united on, and it's about border security. It can't be a 2,000 mile long concrete you know, wall, uh, that it is, it's simply a physically impossible solution that really is never going to happen. Um, and it's not, uh, it's not going to work on its own. So she has said, quote, not, uh, there's not really any doubt that some kind of physical barrier is necessary. So why didn't Democrats show up yesterday? because they're under the thumb of the speaker who tells them not to break out of line. And I think that's what we're seeing right now. Look, understanding something, no one is, and even the president, no one has talked about, you know, having every bit of the southern border in a concrete or even a steel barrier. That is not what is being discussed here. But what is being discussed, and what is it really, frankly, hypocritical of Democrats who put CRs on the floor who have 1.6 billion for border security and border wall, which they voted for and many of their leadership voted for last year. Now they're saying it's immoral. If it was immoral now, it's immoral then. You can't have it both ways. The other thing is, I don't see them if they're so opposed to a wall then start putting in legislation to tear down the walls and tear down the fences at our ports of entry and at those other areas where it's already been built if it's not needed you can't have it both ways you can't say it doesn't work and you can't say that we need it but the biggest thing is what we have right now is we have a stranglehold by Chuck Schumer and by Nancy Pelosi telling all of their members stay away from this and at the same point my question for Miss Pelosi was this can you look at the government workers affected by the shutdown and say I'm putting those who want to break into our country ahead of your right to earn income and work a paycheck. That's the question I ask. I've got to move on to another topic, but first, who, who do you think has the upper hand right now? I think what we've seen is amazing. I think both parties, we need to find a way to solution to fix this. But we've also seen in polls that now when people are understanding what a wall or border security actually means, they understand that when you have uh, rules where people are being killed, where you have drugs coming in, where you have gangs coming in, the, the support for border security and a wall are actually growing. So I think at this point in time, people need to be educated about what we're actually talking about here. All right. To the latest on Steve King now, uh, the House of Representatives passed a, salute, a resolution stating that the chamber, and I, I'm reading it directly, rejects white nationalism and white supremacy as hateful expressions of intoler uh, intolerance that are contradictory to the values that define the people of the United States. Uh, Congressman King voted yes. He voted in support of that measure, and here he is. I've carefully studied every word in this resolution, and even though I'd add some more that are stronger language, I agree with the language in it. So I want to ask my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, Let's vote for this resolution. I'm putting up a yes on the board here because what you say here is right and it's true and it's just. Where do things stand this morning and where do you stand? Well, I, I was the one that handled the bill for the Republicans yesterday on the floor and I made it very clear. The members, we have to understand that our words matter and that people hold us accountable. Whether it's words that seem to give cover for, uh, for an abomination called white nationalism or white supremacist, which is wrong at its very core, or even if members are anti-Semitic and we have those kind of uh, attitudes that are being portrayed out there. I think what the House did yesterday was say this is what we're for. Senator, if you look at this, there's not a person you see today that is not dearly beloved by God. I believe all have been breathed into life by them. How could we not treat anybody with the respect that God has created for us? That is the purpose that we have in life, and that is what we stated on the floor yesterday. Congressman Doug Collins, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you.